All right, and welcome back to day 27 using the Tick Watch. At this point, I've been using this as the daily driver for again 27 days, and I'm ready to draw some more permanent conclusions uh, based on its performance. The number one thing that I think needs to be said is who is the Tick Watch for? And I'm going to include the Tick Watch S in this uh, recommendation as well. Primarily because it's the same hardware, the only difference is the strap is integrated on that watch and has a better GPS antenna. That is it. Other than that, the two watches are essentially identical in terms of hardware. This watch is for who I am going to call, and many of you know this gentleman, Joe Average. This is for a person that likes the idea of a smartwatch. They like the idea of getting notifications on their phone. They want something that is durable, simple, easy to use, has a good variety of uh, nice to have features. It's not you know, bleeding edge technology, but it's not a dinosaur either. And it's kind of this happy balance. It has Google function, it has OK Google, which I had to say they're a little bit different so it didn't wake up and actually recognize that. It has GPS, it has a heart rate monitor, and these are excellent bonuses, but they are not what I would call selling features. And here's what I mean by that. If you want a watch that has an incredibly good fitness program and is good for fitness, the Tick Watch is not a good choice. Neither is the Sport, even if it has that name. And the primary reason I say that is because it is not a sport-centric design or device at least not in the way that people expect it to be. A lot, I think a lot of people, when they expect to get an Android watch that is sports performance oriented, they can wake up, put the watch on, do a run, take it to the gym, do a workout, and then run the rest of their day with the charge remaining on the battery. That's not going to happen with the Tick Watch. It might happen with other watches like Fitbits that are not running Android Wear, which is a fairly power hungry OS, uh, or Garmin's, but again, neither one of those, I believe, primarily run uh, and, or Android Wear. They're running their own proprietary OS that's specifically designed for those functions. Now, that's not to say that you can't use this watch for that function, but make sure you have that charging cable handy. It's only uh, a so many, I think it's a 300 milliamp battery, that's it. Uh, so, just to give you an idea, uh, running the heart rate test, so the full test, I didn't exactly clock how many minutes it was, used about 1% of the battery. Now, there's two ways to look at that. You can say, wow, that's really terrible. Uh, a, a heart rate test that lasts several minutes, taking one entire percent. Or you can look at it and say, well, that's a lot of data that the watch is collecting, calculating, computating. It's not like the watch is doing nothing. And because it's not doing anything, or pardon me, because it is doing something, that means that the data is going to be used. And if the data is used, uh, you're going to have battery drain. And that is a reality. So if you want this awesome performance and for it to tell time for like fitness, you might want to look past this one. However, if you want a watch that receives notifications, that's responsive, durable, not an eyesore, it's got standard uh, removable straps, this is an excellent choice. There is nothing wrong with it. Just make sure that the watch fits the function that you intend for it to fulfill. Because if not, you will be disappointed. There is no two ways about it. So primarily, I've been comparing this watch to my original Pebble. And there are some wins and there are some losses. This is had its moments where it hasn't performed the way that it was supposed to. It was very easy uh, to remediate, however. That being said, I wanted something a little bit more up to date that wasn't quite so smart watchy. And if I ever need something that's got several day battery, I'll just go back and use this. I am not opposed uh, to doing that. In terms of everything else, however, the connectivity, what I'm able to do with it, they're actually fairly equal. There's still a little bit of app development going on for this, but if anything breaks, it's done. Like, 
servicing is going to be fairly limited. Parts are going to dry up for it. It's not what we would call sustainable. This really isn't sustainable either, but it's something that I can get now versus something that I really can't get anymore unless I'm watching uh, for a sale on the internet. So with that being said, I think this is a fantastic watch. If you are the person that wants the convenience of having uh, Google Now on your wrist, if you want notifications being sent discreetly to you and all that good stuff, I would say this is an excellent uh, budget conscious purchase. So if you have any questions about Tick Watch and whether or not it would be right for you, I'd encourage you to leave them in the comments below and I'll read your use case and provide any advice that I can. It might be for the, say, yeah, you'll really enjoy this or mm, hey, have you ever thought about maybe looking at one of these or one of those? So I hope that you've enjoyed the series so far. We're into day 27. I'm not doing these every day, obviously, just whenever I think we've hit a good milestone. Please make sure that you're liking, subscribing, and stay tuned for more. Thanks.